So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Chantel Lincoln and I'm the program director for Drug Free America Foundation. The program today is titled Cultivating Wellness, Building Your Personal Self-Care Toolkit. And it's part of our Marijuana and Pregnancy Educational Project, which is supported by the Florida Department of Health. We have a few housekeeping items to share. We encourage you to use a chat box to introduce yourself and what organization you're with. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, we ask that you please write them in the Q&A box. That way it'll allow us to easily manage the questions and address at the end, which we'll devote about the last 10 minutes or so to your questions. The webinar will be recorded and we will send a link to the, web, to the webinar recording along with a copy of the presentation and a certificate of attendance by Monday afternoon. After the webinar is concluded, a survey will appear in your browser and we ask that you please take a couple moments to complete. There'll just be a few questions and we'd appreciate your feedback. So let's get started. So today we are, have the pleasure of having Maricela, Maricela Sigluwiti. She has 20 years experience working in hospital settings and 13 years of clinical experience as a registered nurse. She graduated from the Holy Name School of Nursing in 2010 and has a dual degree in healthcare management and nursing from St. Peter's University. Through her own healing journey with fibromyalgia, trauma, and grief, she found passion in meeting and helping clients reduce symptoms of pain. She is a certified mindfulness meditation teacher and certified in pain reprocessing therapy. Maricela is the proud owner of Mindfully Pain-Free, a pain recovering coaching service that addresses the psychosocial needs of people living with chronic pain. Using a mind-body approach, she integrates breath work, self-compassion, and somatic mindfulness to guide clients through their own recovery. Maricela is a strong advocate for Latinos with limited access to care, and she provides mindfulness retreats in Spanish to women that want to reduce stress and chronic pain symptoms. Welcome, Maricela. Thank you, Chantel. Thank you so much. Happy Friday, everybody. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm so excited and delighted to be sharing this presentation with you today. Um, you know, I teach stress management on a monthly basis and self-care is one of those things that is very integral to um, stress relief. And some of the objectives for this presentation is really to understand self-care as it relates to well-being identifying personal values and needs for healthy living, and developing our own personalized and sustainable self-care toolkit. I'd like for this webinar to be very interactive, so please share in the chat. And one of the first poll questions is really, how often do we prioritize ourselves? A is more than five hours a week. B is between three to five hours a week. C, less than three hours a week. Or D, there's no time. Chantel, you'll let me know when this is complete. Okay, great. So about 10% said more than five hours a week. Between 30% uh, said between three to five hours a week. 45% said less than three hours and 15% said there's no time. The second question is, how often do we nourish our physical, emotional, and mental health? A, more than five hours a week. B, between three to five hours a week. C, less than three hours a week. D, there's no time.
great. So the results are 22% said more than five hours a week, 17% between three to five hours a week, 57% less than three hours per week, and 4% there's no time. So really understanding stress really leads to self-care, only because we know a little bit more about the effects of stress. And as we are very aware for healthcare workers, the American um, Psychological Association has noted that it's really a mental health crisis going on. And we're gonna be seeing a lot of the effects of stress in the upcoming years to come. And I'd like to initially really teach about the stress fear cycle. And I'm gonna be using this image here of this lady that feels a little bit overwhelmed at work. We've probably felt like that at some point in our lives. And when we're feeling overwhelmed, our brain and our nervous system is sensing a lot of threat, a lot of danger. And we naturally have this fearful response. We have anxiety, worry, preoccupation, perhaps a lot of negative thoughts or rumination, just um, a lot of emotional uh, reactivity to the stress signal. And we feel discomfort in the body by perhaps our heart rate goes up, our um, respiratory rate changes, we feel tension, we feel fatigue, perhaps some of us feel pain. And we have this natural stress response, a way of our coping with stress. Um, and it could be anywhere from you know, avoiding the situation altogether or perhaps even um, just becoming very angry and having a lot of outburst um, to the stressful um, event. So however we are um, showing up for our stress fear cycle, in some way unconsciously really reinforces danger and threat to our nervous system. So this cycle continues um, until perhaps we even notice that there's something that has to be done. And that sometimes comes in the form of illness. And this is another question I like to ask, really based on you know, what we just saw with um, stress at work. You know, what do you do after a particular, uh, particular difficult day at work? You know, you know, a, do you think about something else or distract yourself, try to like avoid it altogether? B, think of the worst possible outcome. C, mentally check out or go numb. Or D, provide some self-reassurance and self-soothing. I don't know if anybody wants to comment in the chat. Sure. So what do you do after a particular difficult day at work? Think about something else, distracting yourself, think of the worst possible outcome, mentally check now or go numb or provide some self-soothing and reassurance. So we have a couple of people that have picked either A, B or C and some of us picked even D. Really depends on the day, okay. Yeah. And dissociation for the win. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's been a lot of research done on stress and the effects of stress, but there's not that much research on self care. I did find a couple of um, surveys that show that Americans, I would say about 49% of Americans, feel relaxed for 40 minutes or less per day, which is, it's really low, it's like 30 minutes per day. Um, and the research shows that 75% of Americans feel like there is some actual benefit of providing um, self-care as, as, as far as like relieving stress. And from one of the research that I've noticed is that people that provide self-care um, are either already in some 
treating some chronic illness, or perhaps they're elderly or retire or have more time for themselves. And, or perhaps they have already a chronic condition that there's no other way but to relieve it with some type of self-care activity. So sometimes in some way we kind of have to wait until um, we're already ill to provide some self-care. So I became very interested in self-care because of my own pain journey. And, you know, one of the leading research for fibromyalgia is emotional awareness and expression therapy. And this looks at pain from a biopsychosocial approach where they're looking at childhood adversity events, or family conflict or inner conflict, perhaps, you know, PTSD and mental health conditions, because now we can notice how our stress response is um, perhaps even heightened. Um, based on this psychological um, space that we already have um, in our lives. And this is also a research um, that um, physical pain from just social rejection. So this study really showed clients that had been um, a recent breakup with their boyfriend or husband, and they were actually having a lot of physical pain. And the way to reduce stress, um, it's very similar um, to reducing pain. And once we notice this response, this danger signal from our brain and our nervous system, once we feel a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, preoccupation because of a stressful event, we start noticing sensations and we have this pattern. Um, and the way that we respond to the pattern is really the way to reduce and perhaps even eliminate um, this uncomfortable or unpleasant stressful response. By this, I mean that soothing our nervous system can at times really decrease our sense response because we are now um, rewiring in some way a new neural pathway with the way that we recognize threat. Um, so I'm gonna use um, just a basic example. Perhaps, you know, at work, you do feel like, you know, something was really uncomfortable at work. And now you're home and you're still feeling uncomfortable and perhaps even ruminating or we were fearful of what happened at work. So by continuing the cycle of just perhaps, um, avoiding or numbing out or just sort of, you know, distracting yourself away from the situation only reinforces danger. Now you can practice soothing that fearful response because that in a way is going to decrease that fear of feeling unsafe in the body. That in a way that sense of threat naturally decreases when we um, just become really aware of what we are doing in the moment and just learning how to self-assure ourselves and self-serve. You know, which leads me to this question, you know, you know, when you are at home from work, having a really difficult day, how do you show up for yourself in a loving way or perhaps even a more compassionate way when you have a difficult moment? And you can perhaps answer these in the chat if you want to. Um, you know, do you do perhaps some self-compassion practices? You know, go for a walk or sending yourself messages of safety or perhaps finding connections with family member, friends, or anything like that. Somebody said finding supporting connections. That's good. Yeah, and any of these practices is really considered self-care because now we're supporting our nervous system to go back into balance. Yeah, having a good support system. 
And sending ourselves messages of safety is really a form of soothing our nervous system. And as we know, when we are in a fight at a freeze response, or let's say, for instance, a hyper activation of our nervous system, we are feeling overwhelmed. We're feeling anxious, irritated, perhaps even mad and angry because we feel um, danger within ourselves. And when we are hypo activating, we feel perhaps alone, a lot of despair, perhaps even sadness and depression and knowing having this self-awareness of our states of our body when we feel intense when we feel numb calm or restless is really a form of self-care because now we're understanding what our body needs and self-care is really important because it's really the practice of prioritizing our emotional mental and physical well-being. And really self-care started many, many um, years ago and really goes back to Greek philosophy where self-awareness was not only understanding our mind and body states, but also understanding our own beliefs, values, and limitations in life. And this takes a lot of self-reflection cultivating inner balance and knowing the different states of our body. Um, let's take some time. So some of the key takes away, um, takeaways from, um, from our first section here is that unmanaged stress really leads to more stress over time. And this sense of hypervigilance leads to emotional and physical symptoms. And really learning how to self-soothe and perhaps even send ourselves messages, messages of safety can really reduce um, that stress for your response. And personal alignment is really this sense of balance between our values, our needs, and our self-care practices. It's really allowing for um, this knowing of how we, what is it that we value and what is it that we need? Because that's really gonna uh, make a difference in the self-care practices that we do. And let's really look at perhaps even in the chat, some of the things that you feel that you need as far as physical needs, perhaps more rest, better nutrition, more sleep, um, or perhaps needs from an emotional perspective needing perhaps more social connections, self-acceptance, or perhaps even personal needs, such as more autonomy, um, being more creative, or own personal growth. If you guys want to share this in the chat. So some people are saying all, oh, they agree with me. Having a good night rest, all of the above. If we can't take care of ourselves, it makes it more difficult to take care of others, definitely. Great. And perhaps even ask ourselves, how much value do we place on self-care? Um, and really exploring our values um, is really, really important because now this internal conflict of perhaps feeling guilty when we take time off for ourselves is a little bit less because we know that self-care really promotes overall well-being. So some examples for really our core values are we value our health, a sense of balance, perhaps, you know, a family, um, having authenticity and independence. 
and this brings me back to having this mind-body awareness, which is really um, a medical term called interoception. It's really the ability to understand some sensations in the body and knowing from the sensations how we're feeling. So I'm gonna be placing a couple of questions or phrases where you can perhaps say yes or no. Let's see if I can copy and paste this here in the chat. The first one is when I feel overwhelmed, I can easily find calm and tranquility. You can either say yes or no. I'm seeing mostly yes, and there is a, uh, I'm, see, I'm sorry, I'm seeing mostly no's, and I see one yes. So that question was, when I feel overwhelmed, I can easily find calm and tranquility. If somebody said, no, it takes them some time, you have to consciously do that. What about this question? I can use my breath to reduce tension in my body. Some people are saying no, some people are saying yes. Some people are saying it really depends on the situation. You have to remember to breathe. <laughs> yes, that's a good one. And last question is, When I have many thoughts, I can calm my mind, concentrating on my body or my breath. So far we have 50-50. Some people are saying yes, some people are saying no. Somebody said I have to stop and pray. So some people believe it's situational. So really self-care includes identifying our stressors, defining our needs and values, aligning those actions um, that meet our needs and values, and really using different types of approaches. Most of them though are using the body. And that's because the body is here in the present moment. And our mind can naturally gravitate towards either the past or the future. So some um, key takeaways here is really, um, really understanding that self-awareness. It's really um, understanding our mental states, our emotional states, and the states of the body. Having alignment or a sense of balance really includes knowing our personal needs, our core values, and aligning our actions to provide self-care. So let's look at some of the stressors um, in our lives from a biopsychosocial model. With this, I mean, if we look at our emotional aspect, 
perhaps who already have diagnosis of anxiety, depression, or OCD, perhaps a history of trauma or PTSD. And if we don't have any of those, we may have inner conflict within ourselves or perhaps some beliefs that um, make it very difficult for us to provide self-care for ourselves. As far as really looking at um, our body, our physical health, perhaps some of us already have chronic pain or some other chronic illness or having difficulty um, going to sleep, issues with hormones or nutrition. And looking at our social economic factors, um, perhaps we're having a difficult time with work or our career or school or family and friends. And once we know our stressors, let's say for instance, work, that's the first model that we looked at, really noticing how it's affecting our health. So say for instance, if you already have chronic pain, your physical health in some way is already affected. So that within itself is creating a lot of stress and discomfort in the body. Or it could be any other chronic illness, or perhaps like we mentioned, you're not getting enough sleep, you're already noticing a lot of fatigue, or you're not getting enough exercise from perhaps even looking at our mental health, how we're really relating to ourselves. Is there a lot of self-criticism or perhaps there's a lot of rumination or fearful thoughts or coming in already with already a mental health condition and looking at our emotional health, looking at our stress patterns, how we respond to fight or freeze. How do we understand our feelings and emotions? Perhaps some of our urges and impulses that we have. Some people call this our spiritual self, I like to call it our higher self. Um, just really noticing if perhaps we are really allowing more um, creativity in the way that we respond to life. Or perhaps noticing um, some of the beliefs that we have. And there's actually been a lot of research with um, chronic pain and how, and I'm just gonna take this as an example, um, how believing that your body is damaged in some way or perhaps unhealthy, that belief within itself um, makes it much harder for people to reduce and eliminate so something um, that perhaps um, they might have heard from a medical uh, provider or somebody, uh, just that belief within themselves is really to really prevent them from even reducing chronic pain. So this is a um, something that we do with chronic pain. It's really looking at different factors in regards to sensing safety within the nervous system. So DIMS is danger in life and SIMS are safety. So looking at um, perhaps a list of things that create a sense of danger within our nervous system, perhaps things that we hear during the day or during the week at work or at home or anywhere we are, Things that we see, if you know, we're always constantly seeing social media and we're also just you know, really creating a lot of anxiety. Things that we do, things that we say. Sometimes we, um, like I mentioned before, we have um, self-criticism or this inner conflict within ourselves that makes it really difficult for us to um, provide self-care because perhaps we're judging ourselves when we're taking some time in. Things that we believe, like I mentioned before, 
perhaps even places that we go or people in our lives and things that are happening within our body. So what are the things that are creating a sense of danger within me? And then what are the things that we can explore that make us feel safe? What are the things that can create a sense of ease, a sense of effortlessness within the day? And this could be you know, something very, very simple you know, it could be exercise, or it could be mindfulness, it could be just reading or writing or journaling. It could be many things that we can add that are also considered part of self-care. And looking at our needs, we can ask ourselves what activities or experiences make me feel energized fulfilled or content? And if you guys wanna answer that in the chat, feel free to do so. Or perhaps what areas of my life feel unbalanced or neglected? What aspects of my physical health or well-being need attention and improvement? These are the questions that we can ask ourselves, you know, really knowing what our personal needs are. walking, spending time with family, gardening, being with friends, being with pets. Listening to music, yeah, absolutely. And really noticing our core values, right? Because this is what's going to drive any self-care practice. It's really um, what really matters to us. What do I care most about? With my own personal journey, you know, I wasn't paying attention to my stress for a very long time until I have chronic pain. And sometimes that's kind of like really challenging because now you have not only stress where you have you know, chronic stress, but now you have a medical condition that you have to deal with. So now it takes twice as long to feel better, to feel relaxed, to feel at ease. And perhaps we can even answer this, you know, what does my heart really long for? What do I really need? That's really important. That's really part of self-care. And when we really look at all these aspects that we went through, it's really a foundation for self-care. And we're looking at our physical sensations, the response of the body in different types of states. When we're angry, when we're sad, when we're fearful, when we're happy, when we find joy in life, how does our body feel? When we allow for emotions not to be negative or positive and we just allow them to be as it is, we can really gain a lot of insight to this because they provide us with different values and different personal needs. And we can allow for our creative part, that curious part within ourselves that can even perhaps even find new ways to feel safe within ourselves or find new ways to find self-care more enjoyable. And that within itself really takes time 
for self-reflection, for self-awareness, for finding self-compassion, and for really um, allowing even negative parts of our personality, if we consider them negative or behaviors, we are allowing self-compassion for all of it. Just really having this whole person-centered approach to self-caring. And inner balance is different for every um, single person. Every one of us is going to find different types of activities, different things to do that are going to make them feel, make you feel balanced and at ease. And that takes practice and some um, trial and error in some way. And these are some of the um, skills that I teach um, people that have um, chronic pain and stress. And everybody, you know, it's different, like I said, so everything is gonna work. Um, some things are gonna work and some things you're not gonna like. You know, breath work, um, it's really, really important for chronic pain, mindfulness, um, self-compassion, sending yourself messages of safety, dancing, singing, exercise. And in this pain journey, I found that nature has really provided not only myself, but other people that have been in chronic pain, um, a sense of connection, a sense of ease, and even really one of the best tools to reduce stress. So if you live in Florida like myself, just really enjoy nature. It really does provide a lot of energy. And journaling, I mean, as I mentioned before, in that um, emotional expression um, mapping or fibromyalgia, journaling and expressive writing are one of the key methods to reduce stress. And some of the key takeaways is really allowing for our values, our goals, our needs to really drive our outcome for self care and well being. And really engaging in self-inquiry as a powerful tool to know what we really want, um, not only within ourselves, but for our well-being. And I want to thank you guys for um, participating. And I love to do, because we have about 10 minutes before um, our q and I love to do very brief practice that you guys can do. It takes not even 10 minutes to really just come in to the body and just really allow the body to um, show you what it really needs. And this um, type of practice I do with my clients, either stress or chronic pain. And what we're doing here in this short meditation practice, is to lean into the positive sensations of the body, to lean into the areas of the body that feel safe, the areas of the body that don't feel discomfort, the areas that feel neutral perhaps, or pleasant like the breath. So I am gonna be using the breath for this, short practice. So perhaps, you know, where you are, if you're sitting in a chair or in your couch, you may have your eyes open or closed or that's something that you feel comfortable with. And if you have your eyes closed, just really allow for your eyes to just come inward, just noticing the landscape of your body. Just allowing the breaths to just be natural and at peace. There's nothing to change with the breath. We're just noticing the breath just as it is. And this gentle noticing really allows us to become very familiar with our internal state.
And we can start by focusing on the physical sensation of the breath as it comes in and as it leaves the body. And noticing the sensation of the breath where it feels more comfortable to you. Some people find it comfortable to notice the breathing as it comes in through the nostrils. Some people prefer the throat area, the chest, or the abdomen. If you find it challenging to focus on the breath, you can have one hand in the abdomen area, and you can just notice the hand as it goes up and down with the breath. So as we notice the breath, breathing in, and just relaxing with the breath, we may notice that the inhale may be short or long, or the exhale may be short or long. And with this very simple practice, when we're breathing in, our goal is to see if we can relax with the exhale. So breathing in and relaxing with the exhale, perhaps even noticing if the exhale can be a little bit longer than the in-breath. There's really nothing to do here other than just noticing how our breath feels as it goes in, into the body, fills the body, and we can relax with the exhale. And we're just watching with a sense of curiosity and ease, with a sense of effortlessness, and just very, very curious how our body's reacting to just breathing in and relaxing with the exhale. That's all we're doing here. And we're leaning into this positive sensation of the breath and allowing our body to just feel ease and comfort. And perhaps noticing if we are even sitting in this chair comfortably, sometimes we may be a little tense sitting in the chair and just allow for the chair or the couch or wherever you are to just hold you. Just allow for it to do all the work. And just breathing in and relaxing with the exhale in a nice and easy way, we are retraining our nervous system that it's safe, that it's safe to be here, that it's safe to be calm. We're sending messages of safety within ourselves. And we may notice areas that are neutral. We may notice areas that are unpleasant. And we may notice areas like the breath that could be pleasant. We're just really enjoying our whole experience just as it is without having to change anything, do anything. If you do have discomfort in the body, see if you can place your attention in an area of the body that doesn't feel discomfort. And the practice here is to toggle back and forth your attention from an area of discomfort to an area of ease and effortlessness. So we're placing our attention 
in one part of our body that doesn't feel discomfort. And then we can toggle back and forth where naturally our attention lands to an area of discomfort. And we're just gonna go back and forth, placing our attention on an area that's neutral, or that feels pleasant. And notice see how our attention naturally goes to an area of discomfort. And within ourselves, we can find perhaps even a sense of contentment and joy as we do this practice. Finding joy within ourselves may be a little bit challenging for some of us, especially if you've had chronic stress for a long time. And Maybe joy is something that we can cultivate within ourselves. When we're able to cultivate this, be able to find more ease and joy in life. And this could be something very simple, I just enjoying the breath as it comes in and it's allowing you to relax with the exhale. Just the very act of attending to ourselves at this moment. It's really, just really pleasant and a sign of kindness. All the sensations can be felt just as it is. And when you guys are ready, you can open your eyes and just orient yourself back. Thank you. Thank you. Chantel, did you want to start the Q&A? Yes, thank you, Maricela, for enlightening us about stress and self-care. These tools can really not only help ourselves, but we can also share with the families we work with as positive ways to cope with stressors and help them not turn to marijuana or other substance use. And we're gonna open it up for questions. Does anyone have any questions or have any input you would like to share with Marcella? If you have any questions, you can type in the Q&A box. That was much needed. Thank you, Maricela. It's feedback. I know for myself, being in tune to my body is something I need to work on. So I really appreciate that breathing exercise. Yeah. Great feedback about the chat box. I don't see any questions. So since there's no other questions, we can go ahead and end early. I just want to let you know um, that we will be sending a recording of this presentation along with a copy of the PowerPoint and a certificate of attendance upon conclusion of this webinar. In your browser, there will be a survey that opens up and I ask that you please complete. It's only a couple questions and we greatly appreciate your feedback. I'll also include in a follow-up email information related to our Marijuana and Pregnancy Project, which has a plethora of resources and recordings to our previous webinars. And I think you all- heard There's, there's well, Chantel, I'm sorry to cut you off. Um, there is a question. Sorry to cut you off. It says, can this okay. model be used for most ages? And this was coming from um, Jagger. So yes, um, I am a consultant for uh, a company that does treat um, children with chronic pain. So we do this model, um, this very similar model um, with children with um, chronic pain conditions. 
And I will send out her information as well, contact information for Maricela that you can contact her as a follow-up to this webinar. Well, thank you everybody. This was wonderful. I love the feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Chantel. Thank you, Maricela, so much. And everybody enjoy your holiday weekend. Thank you for joining us today.